think uh, I'm trying this right here with my earphones on. So I got I got earphones on doing this right here. And I'm going to see if this right here works. If it don't work, it is what it is. So you see we got little arches here, arches here. Um, just going over the last minute final thing. Guys, I have a paint bucket here. I'm going to do a frame and punch out because the plumber is going to show up next week. And I want to have all the framing items in place before he shows up. As you see, the guys are putting the blocking in. This is fire blocking. Anytime you got 10-foot walls, you got to have fire blocking. So you don't want the fire to get in the walls and go up. You want to make sure it has to burn through this right here in order to go to the next level. So they're putting that in and, you know, they're framing everything, the right um, distance and everything. So um, I may come over here this weekend. Uh, and put the um, pocket doors in. That may be an item I, I took on frame and do that part. But I'm kind of looking around, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start in the basement. And I got these cans of paint here. And I got a little small step ladder right here. So I'm gonna mark off all the framing items that we need to address here. Uh, that's load bearing. Now, anything that's non-load bearing, we don't, I don't fool with that too much, but. Um, all right guys this right here is Emmett Stallworth the Alpha Builder again um, thank you guys for dropping by in this video right here guys you want to make sure now you want to make sure that when you go through a house that's being framed maybe one or two days before that framer it's going to leave that site. Now, my guys got to come back because the windows, it's going to be about another week before our windows and doors get in. And, and they got to install the windows and doors. Well, that's part of their duty. But um, right before those guys, your framers are getting ready to pack up and leave, maybe a day or two before they get ready to pack up and leave, you want to walk through that house and you want to pay attention to the loads. Now, I don't really want to, I went in the basement because they weren't in the basement anymore and I start punching out the basement and we call these punch outs. So these are the last minute details or the last details that they need to handle that you saw. And, and this is just not, it's not all of it. You know, your, your um, inspectors may catch some things. That's why, guys, I think one of the main trades that most builders should learn is framing and i say this right here too i actually think here in alabama that framing should be a licensed trade very similar to mechanical electrical and plumbing they framing should be licensed right along with those i think some states may even do that framing should be one of those um because it's dangerous. If you don't have those loads stacked right, you know, you're going to have deflection. You're going to have items that give. And it's just not, you know, you know, it's a lot of detail when it gets into framing, guys. So, so I, I just make sure that I walk through, give me some red paint, spray everything, make sure my framers and everybody understand what I'm seeing. Um, and then to a degree, some of the framers will come to you and say, well, you know, you don't necessarily need that, but just do what I ask you to do. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's kind of how I see it. Just, you know, these are the things I want you to do. And there was a situation where there was some cripples right up above a header. And it's like when, you know, and you had three joists um, that was together and he said, well, you don't need anything, but just, just do it. You know, it looks better to me. But guys, pay attention to your framing. You got to catch these guys before they leave. Um, make sure they get, they cover all the framing details. Um, now they're going to come back. So make sure you hold a little money. Your framers are going to come back because you can't get your framing inspection. Well, I know in most municipalities, you can't get your framing inspection until all your roughs have been done. So that means your mechanical, 
um, electrical and plumbing. All of those guys are finished because those guys are going to cut through. They may try to cut through framing members. I would really make sure you meet those plumbers on site. Plumbers, mainly the plumbers. Plumbers are notorious for, you know, um, sawing through structural members. They're bad about that. So, you know, I, I hate even, you know, when a, when a plumber shows up with a reciprocating saw, um, it just kind of makes my stomach cringe. So make sure you watch those guys. And, and not only that, man, just get with the plumbers and tell them, look, man, if you're going to go outside of the house with pipes and stuff like that, you know, get them a hole cutters. Or, 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 or they need to get things that cut it the right hole size and they can just slide it through there. Instead of them getting a reciprocating saw and just gouging out a whole portion of you. Because at the end of the day, guys, you, all the spaces that you have, all the holes that you have, the pipe go through the hole and you have space left over, you're going to have to plug that stuff up. You're going to have to seal it because in today's, um, with today's standards, you have to have all everything needs to be tight. You got to make, and, and you, you, your house have to actually pass a, a, um, a blower door test. And, it, it, you know, if you got all these cracks and stuff all over the house where your subcontractors gouged out holes in the, um, on the sheath of material, it's going to be hard for you to meet that, to, to get those air exchanges correct. And you're not going to get your CO. He's just not going to be able to get it. Um, because you're, your person who's doing your audit on the duct blaster, your duct blaster, your, your, your blower door test, they need to be a third party. They don't need to be, they don't need to be working for the HVAC guy because he can go make his stuff work. So keep that in mind. So these guys got to make sure, you know, you, you want to meet those, you want to meet those um, MEP guys out there on site and make sure that they're not gouging through a lot of your framing members. Now, you know, you're going to have to hit studs and stuff like that. They make sure they put the stud savers and things of that nature in place to uh, kind of make sure your framing members are intact. But just don't let them guys just butcher up your house. So keep that in mind, guys, and, you know, enjoy the video. All right, guys. So I did a little, you know, and I'm just gonna do the basement for now, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do the upstairs because they actually working upstairs, and I hate to kind of walk in there, man, and just kind of impede upon them and, and just, you know, I let them get a chance to do what they're gonna do first before I go up there and start, you know. I, I thought about it. I was like, man, let me let these guys finish up what they're gonna do. All right, so here for your garage door, you run a two by four. You run it straight up all the way up to the top. You want a two by four right here and a two by four here. And also we got treated liners that's gonna go all the way around the garage door. That's what the um, brick is gonna butt to. And I also put this here because there are some straps. There are some shear wall straps that needs to be put right here. That strap goes all the way down. It grabs that, it grabs that trimmer stud right there. Same thing on the other side. Look like you only got, yeah. It grabs one of these trimmers. So it goes along with it's about, about a two feet strap. It's going to go here and keep all this as one solid piece. So this right here wall don't try to sway this way. So I went on ahead and I put all the, all the um, two by six studs. I, I just kept them. I had them out there in the pile to send them back. But my guys are going to probably need that stuff. They, they're going to, I, I took them out. They're going to need that stuff. So that was needed. So I did the same thing here. And guys, you can see where we got, um, where I have um, double, when I have double joists, I need a double stud up under it, immediately up under it somewhere. Uh, you know, in places like this right here. So you got you got a double stud here. You need to have two studs immediately up under it. I mean, this is this right here is cut, so that's not gonna work. That'll, that'll work for this one right here. That'll work for that one. But you need two right here. Carry that load down. I'm checking all my hangers. Make sure we got our hangers in. Uh, like right up on the steps. This is a good common place to miss hangers. See right here. I put that here. Make sure we didn't forget those hangers here. Um, here as well, guys. You know, we got uh, got a double. I'll probably go ahead and tell them to do three of them right here, man, because I like for it to be a little bigger. 
Although the wood is the same size, it just needs to be at least the same size. I think, well, actually, I think it's a half inch long when you go down. So you got these right here. You need to double those up, double those up, double that stuff up. Got, got the same thing going on right here. So these are some of the items. I also went here, like these anchor bolts, guys. Make sure they got washers and nuts on uh, And I guarantee you there's a lot of them up here as well. So they need to get the hand and fill up there and make sure they got all that together as well. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to walk through this thing and I'm going to spray paint. You know, like I said, I spray painted all the stuff I think that needs to happen. There's probably some hangers right up under here too, guys. It needs to be handled. Um, <coughs> make sure you got treated. <laughs> Touching concrete. Checking this to make sure these are still here. Uh, make sure ain't nobody took those. That looks good, guys. So, <clears throat> these are some of the things that you want to make sure. So, I'm just in the basement right now. I'm going to give you guys, this is another one right here. That that that, that triple comes right here. Here. Also, one thing that I forgot, guys, is when you, anything that's greater than two ply, this right here is a, this right here is a four ply. LVL beam, this is a three ply. So, when you're dealing with a three ply, ply you can't just come here and uh, face nail these things together. You gotta have screws or something. They, they, they gotta be screwed together to create one beam. Now, if you got a two ply, like this, well, even this guy right here, this right here, this is a three ply. So you're gonna need, um, you're gonna need, um, this, they make some screws that you can screw them together. And those screws gotta be every, every I think two feet apart. Every two feet part, and you got to stack them up and down, up and down. So, um, so I mean, I like to have all the framing items completed and done before the plumber guys get here. I don't, I don't want the because you know the plumber guy. Let's just say, for instance, he got a, he got a gut through this right here. You know, they they put savers on here too. They put some things on there to save those studs. But if you got to go through that those studs right there, um. It's, it's, a, it's a heck of a lot harder if I have a plumber. If I didn't have these up first, and my plumber ran through there, now I got to try to put a stud in here to hold that up. Now, now that becomes a headache, um, uh, especially when the electrician get in here and start working on his stuff. Man, you definitely don't want that to happen. Um, and you also got to make sure I didn't I didn't mark this right here, but you know, make sure they get the rat seals off. These things got to come out. Um, so. Other than that, man, it's coming together. All right, guys. All right, guys. If you like this content and you want to continue to follow a house from the beginning stage all the way to the end, uh, from a builder's point of view, see some of the things that we look at and some of the things, you know, some of the ways that we think when we actually navigate through trying to build a home. Um, the members channel is really good. All you have to do is hit that join button. Just hit that join button. Cost you three dollars a month for now until I get everything up there. Because um, we're at the beginning phases of it. Once I get everything up, I may have to bump it up a little bit because this is a lot of information. You know, you can follow this right here and practically almost build your own home. Um, you know, this is not. I don't want to. I don't want people to go out here and. And, and think that they're a builder or expert overnight because this is just not going to happen, guys. The stuff that you see me doing, it has taken me 20 plus years to gain this knowledge from, from, from other builders, from mistakes that I've made. And I'm compiling all this right here and serve it on a platter. So if you guys like this information, hit the join button and I look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks. Ooh.